Uh, sure. So the arguments for wars for preemptive democratization are pretty simple. So within our own country, we would never accept, say, a given state like Missouri, just deciding not to be a democracy. We clearly would not respect these borders and just allow them to abandon their principles and violate people's human rights. Similarly, we should not allow it in other nations around the world. We should not allow it in other countries around the world. That's kind of the more moralistic argument. So in terms of utilitarian impacts, um, democracy is just simply enormously superior than our non-democracies. Um, we've seen an enormous shift towards democracy over time. Those democracies are enormously better for their citizens. This is from a paper by Romer. It shows that democracies are about 50,000 times less likely to kill their citizens. That's pretty good. Less citizens, probably a good thing. Uh, we also know that democracy increases economic growth. Economic growth is the number one way to get people out of poverty. It's the number one way to allow people to achieve their goals. So it seems pretty important. And we also know that consistent democracies, democracies that are very strong in their protection of rights, are much more stable than any other form of government. So if we could move the entire world to this form of government, then we generally have less civil war, less strife, and so on. So these arguments seem pretty simple in favor of like a worldwide democracy. The question is simply how we get there. And so the question is, um, do wars that impose democracy in other areas work. And so it's true that wars to impose democracy don't have a perfect track record. However, a large part of this is due to reasons why those areas would already generally have failing democracies. So for example, my opponent cited uh, Turr's 2008, I think. This response to Turr's, I think, explains pretty well why uh, you can't just look at the low rate of democratic success alone. Generally, places that we would tend to invade to impose democracy have historically been the places where democracy would be least likely to succeed. Generally, they are poor, war-torn, low-educated, high ethnic strife, high religious strife areas that would, in general, have fa had failed democracies regardless. So the reason they fail is because they're the type of places that we're going to invade in the first place. So the suggestion from some of these studies, um, similarly, uh, this study I think has a nice graph about it. Um, if you look when it's loading, the first graph is the survival curve of imposed democracies. As you can see, generally very few of them survive, say around like 150 years. However, again, a large part of this is due to strife in those regions. Um, the number one way to increase the success rate of imposed democracies is to have a prior experience with democracy. So the argument here, I think, is very simple. Places where democracy has failed are generally due to reasons outside of the control of any nation, including the nation that is currently in control of the area. They can't lower the ethnic diversity, unless we want to argue for genocide. They can't increase economic development more quickly over time, or they'd already be doing it. So the only thing that we can look at is having that experience with prior democracy. That's table two. It's the top column. It's a little hard to interpret these Weibull models, but the fact that it's a really small coefficient, um, like say 3.74 times 10 to the minus 8, indicates that prior democratic experience enormously increases the expected lifespan of a given democracy. Therefore, the best way to create democracy is to impose democracy, give people there a long history with democracy by imposing it upon them, and then allowing maybe even that democracy to fail and then an emergent democracy to arise afterwards. In short, this way we would maximize democracy around the world. This, in, this has a number of beneficial impacts for the world, so we'd want to achieve this outcome. That's it. All right. So um, all of this data is really good uh, to examine, but we have a crucial problem with you here. Um, my opponent is forgetting that the statement above is that we uh, uh, that the statement is that we should try to bring democratization through war. So mm -hmm. um, it's it's not about uh, bringing, uh, uh, um, making a, a democracy sprout through other means, but through war. That, that should always be remembered. Then um, my, uh, uh, my argument of, uh, my point of argumentation begins uh, with the statement itself, we should engage in preemptive war with the aim of democratization because there are three uh, bigger unclearness that should be first addressed. Um, and, that, and this is also called the unclearness of the statement. So we should mm -hmm. uh, first of all ask, uh, ask ourselves, could you not make them, um, because I'm trying to concentrate, um, what is, oh, uh, what is uh, preemptive war or, um, and when uh, sh uh, does, should a country uh, engage in preemptive war? Then uh, should we should countries ever uh, attack other countries like uh, the question in principle uh, as to build a democracy because um, 
also the question is that uh, only a democracy can build another democracy. But then the question comes, what do we consider democracy? We are not uh, just talking in American, the American sense, because we are here as an international uh, audience uh, with each uh, living maybe not uh, uh, in more in countries considered more or less democracies uh, or even no democracy. But then the question is, when is a democracy a democracy? Uh, and we shouldn't just always look from the American standard because this is not the standard number one. Uh, secondly, also, uh, um, which states can implement a democracy? We should always ask ourselves, could a state like Russia, for example, that calls itself a democracy, uh, should it be uh, should it be able to implement democratization, lead wars with other countries to democratize it? Then um, also, uh, which form of democratization and uh, in the end democracy are we talking about? Um, and uh, we should ask ourselves, when can we can the country that invades other countries or uh, tries to democratize democratized with war, uh, say that now we achieved it, we democratized it, or we brought the first seeds for democratization. When is this point reached? Uh, and so also the question, what are the binding factors of every democracy? Um, what, uh, what makes, in the end, a democracy a democracy? If we can't answer those questions, why even then talk about war when we can't uh, define what a real democracy is, when we can't define when we should lead preemptive war and why we should pre uh, lead uh, preemptive war and not use other means uh, to democratize countries? Also, um, yes, this would be my first statement. Then. Uh, to, 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 to. uh yeah it's your turn sure so i believe your first point was why would we look at the american standard for democracy and how would we decide when we've achieved democracy are those good summaries of your points uh this was one but it was a minor point so the main point is, what is democracy, what is pre, uh, when and what is preemptive war, uh, and why using war as a, as a measure uh, to democratize. Uh, I, I was just saying that uh, we are living in a, this is a multicultural audience, and we are not just all Americans. And uh, for example, I, I live in Germany, and we also have a democracy. So mm -hmm. should we also uh, be allowed. Or is uh, China, so or Russia, who say, say of themselves that they are democracy, could they also invade other countries for the aim of democratization? Well, sure. So why don't we just directly address this? There are attempts to measure democracy. Uh, the Probably the most well-cited one is the Polity 5 projects, which broadly define like a gradient between democracy, where there is very open political competition and virtually every position is competed in by openly by parties or like groups of people based on ideology. And then autocracy is the other hand, where party competition is either non-existent or it's all within some like power structure. There is no real competition. Is it like, are these reasonable standards? Uh, no, because uh, I'm asking wh what makes a democracy democracy, you say measurement, uh, but uh, we also for the normal and also for our audience, uh, what makes a democracy a democracy, not how, uh, because when you're saying you want to measure democracy, then you're already assuming that there is a democracy. And I want to have the, the, the defining points, but because if we don't have it, why should we lead war against other countries to democratize them if we don't know ourselves what democracy, democracy is? And for, uh, if you uh, don't give a valid definition of what democracy is, why should we then invade other countries? Well, sure. So I gave a definition, right? Democracy is when you have open political competition. Autocracy is when you have no open political competition. Like, what makes a definition valid or invalid? Yeah, I mean, uh, you could also like, uh, uh, like uh, having an open competition is a pretty vague term. What do you mean with that? I mean, sure. So like the way they measure it, they'll say like, hey, can parties compete for the most powerful positions in the country, like the presidency, the parliaments, etc. Yes. So in China, there are also other parties that compete. But in the end, or in Russia, in the end, it's always Putin that becomes president. 
and his party that wins. That doesn't mean that it's democ that is a, that it is objectively uh, seen a democracy. So, sure. why so are, are you questioning the ability to objectively measure or like define democracy? No, I just want to hear before we go on with our debate uh, points. Uh, uh, I just want to know if you really know what a democracy is. So uh, as to go the second step to say that we should invade other countries to democratize them. Well, sure, that's what I'm just trying to like. I'm trying to ask you what the standards for a valid definition would be. Like, I, I mean, just just uh, no, uh, your point of um, well, uh, a point of having an open competition is a pretty vague one. I just want you to uh, make it more clear, also for me and for the others. I, sure. I mean, I can go get the poly definition. I think I even uh, cited it in this debate. But the, more broadly, like, do you think it's Im if we can just turn in, like, if we can just use another definition of democracy, would that be fine? If I just said it was like, I don't know, when people have a genuine ability to choose between competing par par parties for who controls their life or something. Why can't we just define it as a broad, vague term? Why does it need to be very specific? Because uh, we are talking about democratization of other countries. So there would be, uh, there must be like a point where we can say, okay, democratization has begun in this country through uh, the, uh, I don't know, uh, through many parties or etc. cetera, but um, uh, we, in, when we talk about it, we need a, a clear understanding, and uh, I just want to hear your clear understanding. Your, I mean, you're you're relying on authority from other people when they say, "Okay, yeah. this is a democracy," um, but you are the one saying that we should invite other people. Why don't you have like then some points that uh, then make that make it clear what a democracy is? Because I also, I gave a pic, uh, I gave a screenshot from. Um, uh, from the BPB uh, that talks about democracy, we use this uh, um, um, uh, brochure uh, or booklet to educate people uh, or like also people in school, what is a democracy? And also it says that there, there were never, um, uh, um, uh, there's never a universal mod model for democracy. So um, just for our better understanding and just uh, to differentiate when is a country uh, when can we say a country is really a uh, leading war for the aim of democratization? Uh, and when is it just uh, also uh, doing this for other purposes? Or um, is this country a democracy itself? Because uh, that's, that's what I try to say, that we are always looking from the American standard, standard but we also have other countries uh, that speak in democracy, uh, that have democracies, ultimately. And that's why I'm asking for the binding factors. What is it that makes all of those democracies democracies that we can give them this universal term of democracy? Sorry, you can go. Sure. So that's what I've been like repeatedly trying to ask. What are you setting the standards at a valid, like universal definition of democracy? To me, the argument of open political competition, while mm -hmm. it does include some vagueness, is sufficient to cover like a pretty broad type of democracies, parliamentary democracies, presidential democracies, virtually every type of democracy that is genuine competition would fall under this. Why is this not a valid definition? How, how do you define, how do you know if the term is too vague? Because uh, uh, having, um, uh, having a form of electing uh, uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't make it a democracy, as I uh, told you. Sure, that's uh, why we're talking about like actual political competition. So like in, in Putin's Russia, we can see, for yes. example, the same ruling party has been in power for 35 years. It yes. seems unlikely that this is a realistic competition, or 30 years rather. Yes, but um, uh, it's, it is for your sub subjective lens. Uh, and that's why uh, that's why also in science we also try to find definitions uh, that uh, that makes it clear for everyone uh, what uh, a democracy is. So, for example, sure. I mean, we could just all go another route, right? We could just say like systems that are respectful of people's rights, right? We could just add on definitions to this. And in general, yeah. the more definitions we add on, the further it would seem that places like Russia or China are to meeting these definitions. Yes, if but, that's your question. Uh, no, no. Um, but the problem I have with you here is that you are using word shells uh, like respect citizens, just as you said. Um, what does it mean to respect someone? Because, for example, also uh, we also have this discussion in political philosophy. We can't just use, uh, use uh, word shell, uh, shells. And I want to bring you back from this because uh, we, are, we are talking about uh, 
waging war against country, you're talking about the ruining of thousands and maybe millions of lives uh, for the greater aim, and in quotation marks, uh, of democratization. So uh, I am really, really careful because we are potentially potentially ruining lives for many, many, many people. We are ruining it, ruining it for next generations, for women, children. So I want to give you, because we are talking about war, uh, a good definition where we can say, oh, all right, now uh, we found we, those are the seeds for a democracy that, that it can sprout off. Like, uh, what are the structures sure, that we I need? guess my point is, like, you, you just aren't directly answering my question. Every time I say, how do we decide if this is a good definition of democracy, you just pivot to saying, well, you want war. You need to provide a really good definition of democracy. I know. I'm asking you what a good definition is. Give me the standards for a good definition. So uh, the uh, a definition that just goes um, uh, more far away, uh, for example, you, you were just talking about the society and that we have multiple uh, parties running, but also the structure uh, in the government, for, uh, for example, the, uh, what's about the separation of powers? Uh, how should they work? And when can, can we say that they are working uh, in an efficient manner? Well, that, yeah, you're, you're pivoting you, you around... Just aren't, okay. You're, you're, so, uh, yeah, okay, go on. Sure. So, like, I could point to stuff like, say, reporters, Sans Frontiers, right? And they have a, a survey that they ask of journalists to ask them about, like, various journalist rights in a given country. Mm -hmm. We could, in general, say that countries do, that do better on this are more democratic. Countries that do worse on this are less democratic. We can combine a bunch of axes like this, and there are already existing projects that do stuff like this, where we can estimate how much people's rights in various fields are respected. Like, why are these not sufficient definitions of democracy? I'm, I'm just trying to ask you, what makes a definition good or a definition bad? Ah, OK, I understood your point. No, I'm, uh, uh, I'm not uh, saying that uh, we should, um, that the measurements aren't good. I'm saying that we, in our discussion, need a good basis for democracy to also understand uh, the sprouting point. From where it begins, I think we are talking. Uh, uh, we are not, we are not referring to each other's point, and you are not referring to my point. What are you talking about, like by the sprouting point? What does that mean? Um, so, for example, a uh, um, pretty good example would always be like America uh, invading uh, the Middle East. So uh, when, um, when, for example, a hypothetical example, American uh, invades Iraq or some, something like this already hap uh, happened in, in history, you know. But um, so America invades the country. What does it have to do uh, that we can say, all right, uh, uh, it has to uh, first, uh, those, uh, uh, democracy is building itself. Sure. So, like, presumably, the the open political competition thing is a gradient. The ability to speak freely thing are is a gradient. Most of these things are gradients. So we could say that as countries are moving along these axes, that they are coming closer to democracy. The sprouting point would be like wherever the country currently is, and as they move closer to democracy. Hmm. Like, I guess in general, like. It, it seems like you're just being skeptical of the very ability to define democracy or human rights or any of these terms. Hmm. Uh, no, I'm not uh, not saying that they are that they are not definable, but I'm saying that we have to have to at least when we are having a vague term that uh, we should know where where the inabilities of this vague term. If we don't know it, then uh, why sure. like, uh, why I, even we, the, we the thought understand of the limitations. We un like the, the limitations of the polity IV system mm. are clear. All it cares about is open political competition. It doesn't care about like what percent of people vote. It, it counted like the United States, which had slavery as a full democracy. Sure, but we can still use these broad definitions to see that some countries don't even meet these very broad definitions. Some countries mm. do not even have open political competition. So in general, moving towards like these standards should lead to more democracy. Do you disagree? Uh I beg your pardon. I didn't understand your last part, uh, the, the last quarter. So even if a definition of democracy doesn't include everything we care about in democracy, or even if it's not extremely precise, it is precise enough to give us a guideline to say, hey, this country, like Iraq before the invasion, had no open political competition. It is so far from a democracy that we can clearly say it's not a democracy. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. So. Uh, I agree that there are 
that there are certain countries that are definitely no no democracies. All right, but uh, I I, 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 want, I was I was pointing at the point that the vagueness is pretty uh, the vagueness and when uh, in the context of war is pretty uh, is really really dangerous because we are p talking about the ruining of lives so um, also talk to talk about another point well let's consider um, that for a moment right so like the, no, the evidence can I, just, I can I just sure, go, go ahead mm -hmm. so uh, just uh, considering that so if we also implement implement democracy um, uh, are we are we just talking about War, or are we also ta ta talking about the annexation of a country or the hegemony of a country? So, uh, to to establish, or are you like imagining? Yeah, we just invade the war, then we bring democracy, and then we leave it again. Sure. So, just to get the first point, so a lot of these studies that I've cited that showed positive effects from democracy, like the um, the one that that showed democracy was more stable, they use the polity definition. All they care about is open political competition. Just having open political competition is enough to increase GDP growth by like one percent per year. Is enough to reduce the risk that your country falls apart by like ten times. Is enough to reduce the amount of people killed in your country by like fifty thousand times. So even though these definitions aren't perfect, we do see that they do empirically correlate with the things that we do care about uh, yeah but so to me that's... that is good enough is it not for you no uh, but uh, always uh, remember you are you're having different studies there and you may making like the scientific mistake of having uh, correlation and causation and mix mixing them up well, I mean uh, and if you want to critique these studies like some of the the, the democracy no, growth just, one very clearly yeah, but, but, you're, but you're bringing them into like into connection uh, even though they're uh, they're not uh, citing uh, each other each other directly. Well, they're all using the polity yeah, definition, you're, you're, so they're they're you're, explicitly you're... using the definition that I'm using, and they explicitly correlate with things that we care about. So it seems like even yeah, if the definition yeah, is imprecise, it would still yeah. lead to a good outcome to impose this definition worldwide. I mean, yeah, the uh, uh, maybe there may be a correlation, but not the causation between each other. Where how do you where do you find what the that, causation? What does it mean in, to have a causation of a definition? Yes, yeah, so you bring so you're saying the building of democracy also uh, lowers the uh, like the total death rate, uh, etc. Mm -hmm. In the countries, um, uh, which picture was it? Because you sent so many in. Sure, that's fine. It's the first study. It's by Romer. That one doesn't estimate causation. I'll gladly drop that if you want to just talk about causation. The no, second no, study I, I'm shows... Talking, what, I'm, I'm, what I'm referring to is the different studies that you're having. You're bringing them into connection. And I just want to make clear that uh, that this is uh, that you can't do this. Because you're... Uh, that, that, yeah, that's the problem between causation and, uh, causation and uh, correlation. For example, there is like what? this pretty famous example of... Uh, the, the movies, uh, the movies of uh, of of this one actor and the suicide. Uh, uh, so um, I I forgot his name uh, of this actor making more movies uh, in a certain time. I think two two thousand and ten and something like this. And also like the total suicide rate rising. Yeah. And then when you compare those two graphs, that uh, they, they are both rising in the same amount of time. That doesn't mean that the moves of this actor um, made it uh, more uh, uh, made the suicide uh, uh, rate rise. And that's sure. so that's, you... that's this problem between causation and uh, correlation. Uh, yeah, exa. Yeah, that, that, that. Sure. So we can critique whether my studies demonstrate that there is a causal effect between democracy and outcomes. But all I'm trying to get you to concede is that they are using the definition of democracy that I care about, and they at least correlate with the outcome we care about. Do you concede that? Uh, again, I, I don't get the point that you're bringing. So like the, the point is, even this vague definition strongly correlates with stuff we care about. Do you agree? Why does it strongly correlate? Well, like, it, it's a 50,000 times reduction in death, for example. Yeah, I generally want less people to die. Bring, yeah, what, 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 is the, what is the binding factor? I mean, well, you you're brought this, uh, 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 this picture here um, for, for causing and causation. 
Yeah, so I posted the Tyler Viggen one. So the reason the Tyler Viggen one is like spurious is because we have no way to estimate causation. And in some of these studies, we don't have a good way to estimate causation. If that's the only critique you want to raise, sure. I would still just defend the second study, which shows that democracy enormously increases economic growth and economic growth enormously decreases poverty. If you care about less people dying and more people fulfilling their lives, you'd want democracy. Yeah, but uh, then always have to remember you're uh, you're talking about war, and not every war will be a successful will, will be successful in democratization. So uh, uh, just think we are not we are not talking about that we are trying to support those countries economically or something like this, and then uh, h help them uh, to develop into a d democratization. Let me just I have I'm not that fast in giving my sources as you are, as talented. Okay. Uh, let me just I have uh, one here. Uh, oh my God. Okay. Um, let me just I'm trying to copy paste it. Sure. Just fuck. Yeah, I can't I can't drop it right. Uh, just and um, so uh, why what gives you what gives you the idea that bringing uh, using war to bring uh, to bring uh, um, in the end a democracy uh, is a good idea why not just having al other alternatives for example um, uh, 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 economic growth that will in the end uh, lead to democratization and I have this picture here I hope I can drop it in ah here um, that says uh, the richer a country is, the greater the chances for a democracy state, uh, for a dem democratic state constitution. Why not use this outcome? Why using war? Oh, to be clear, this one is also not causational. It's just correlational. So if you're going to critique causation and correlation, I'll just say this one's the Nick Cage people dying in pool correlation. No, I, I took it out from uh, the study. I don't. Yeah, the, the study doesn't estimate causation. No, it uh, it uh, just shows what's likelier. Well, sure. So if higher economic growth leads to more stable democracy, and if imposing democracy increases economic growth, then it seems like imposing democracy makes it more likely that democracy will be stable. I'm glad we agree. So it seems like we've moved away from the first point about defining democracy, and we now move to your third point. Your third point is that, hey, is war the best method to achieve this? And so right now your question is, is it economic development or war that's the best thing? And uh, no, that, that's is... not, no, 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 no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying why not using economic development instead of war? Because war should always be the end, uh, the the ultimate, ultimate solution, or, or shouldn't even be the solution uh, to to bring something like democracy. Why? And also, we are talking not just about war. We're talking about preemptive war. We are saying that we can invade countries just on the thought that, uh, just on the idea that we can bring democratization. I'm not saying that um, uh, 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 about uh, the possibility or if it's more effective to bring uh, through economical growth uh, democratization. No, I'm asking uh, if we have other options, no matter if they are more efficient or not, but we are talking about war. I think you're forgetting that we're talking about war, uh, 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 about the ending of many, many lives. Sure. So if the debate isn't about whether he X is more effective than Y, why are we talking about X? The question should only be about whether Y is an effective way of doing things. No. Like the, if no, if no, war no, no. works, why is, does it matter that something else works better? It would still be true that we should no, do we are, war, we are not, but then in are... another debate, we'd also agree that war is dispreferable to whatever it is you're talking about. But that's not what we're debating. We're just debating about whether war is good in no, this respect. No, we are not. We are not. We are asking the questions. Uh, we are asking the, the, the statement is uh, we should engage in preemptive war with uh, the aim of democratization. Now we are talking on a theoretical yeah, level. Sure. So but let, in, let me let me no, engage no, you in a hypothetical. In practice, in practice uh, uh, there are also other options that we have. Why not use the other options? Why do? Sure. Why? No, so so let me pose a hypothetical. Is, why do you conclude? Why do you don't? Why don't you think? Uh, why don't you uh, consider economical growth, but want war? You want to kill human beings just for an idea? And Karl sure. Popper said we should uh, uh, not don't let people die. Let the ideas die. Uh, sure. For the one, idea of waging less people dying, idea, so that's why. The idea of uh, waging preemptive war with the aim of democratization. I'm not saying that we shouldn't democratize, but we have 
other means to democratize. Go on. Sure. Let me pose a simple hypothetical to you. So let's imagine that there is a guy in front of you. He's going to murder someone else in the next five minutes unless you do something about it. And your options are either one, do nothing. This means one person dies. Two, you shoot him, which means the murderer dies. Or three, you go over and give him a long talk about like life and philosophy, and he decides to change his actions. Oh, that's if not, the that's only not options we're currently discussing are option one, do nothing, and option two, shoot him, which one is better? That's not, that's not, that doesn't even meet uh, what we are talking about. That you, you're making, uh, you're making... It's you're, that there, are, there might making, be other options that are more I effective. We are only discussing whether called, this option is effective, is I worth think, it. I think that's called a binary... Uh, binary uh, problem, or I forgot the English term, that you're making uh, a problem with call much false more dichotomy. options. Yeah, false dichotomy. Uh, and that's not true. And in this case, you're making three options out of it. And that's not true. Oh. And we are not talking about yeah. uh, philosophy. You, uh, you are trying to downplay it through giving it uh, the philosophical connotation. That's not true. So let's imagine that the debate topic were we should have um, pub a publicly funded like healthcare option. And you got in this debate and you're like, no, instead of a publicly funded healthcare option, we should instead have a single payer option. Well, the question isn't about whether we should have that instead of the publicly funded option. It's whether the publicly funded option is better than the status quo. Just because there might be an even better alternative doesn't mean that we shouldn't still do this pretty good alternative. Why? We're, again, you are, uh, we're, you're talking about healthcare, okay? About uh, uh, make, making, uh, making it uh, payable for people, which is a pretty big problem in the US, it seems like, uh, that people can pay their hospital bills. And you're bringing this into, uh, into the example of war, of killing people. That's not understandable. Well, sure. So I, I brought up an example before. Would you be willing to kill one murderer to save two lives? Let's say the murderer is going to go kill like a family of three or something. Is it okay to kill one to save three? Net plus two? Give me just a moment. Sure. So your so uh, your assumption is that uh, if we don't democratize those so let me just uh, put it the other way around you asking let's the, just, like let's the moral just presume, question let's just yeah let's just presume uh, all right we are, we are saving more lives yeah we're laying this mm -hmm. uh, ground for democratization all right so the question would be how can we make sure that through war uh, this democracy can sprout and we can save lives because uh, so how should it be achievable uh, to democratize countries through war? Because oh. and, uh, and preemptive war it always means we are in the uh, in the aggressor position. Yep. Yes. I mean, sir, I'm, so just on the moral question, do you agree you should kill the murder? Uh, in, in this example, but uh, I don't okay. see how, how this correlates. Okay, go on, bring your argument. Okay, so if we should kill the murderer, and the only other option we're discussing in this debate is doing nothing, then you would kill the murderer over doing nothing, right? Yeah, killing the murderer, yes. So the question in this debate is not, what is the best way to bring democracy? That's a whole separate discussion. The question is simply, is it better to do what we're doing now, which is no war to bring democracy, no foreign aid really to bring democracy, or should we do war to bring democracy? It's only a question of inaction versus this specific action. Which one's better? Mm -hmm. Okay, I can, so like, I, can, I can see the point. But uh, I just want to bring another point here. Okay. Uh, that is, um, so when we, uh, the problem also is that um, uh, democracies can also uh, often be uh, abolished by the people itself. So when a regime, for example, mm -hmm. Nazi, and Nazi Germany uh, was occupied so, uh, so long uh, under Hitler, they don't become uh, po politic, uh, 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 democratic pillars in one day. Uh, it takes time for them to grow into that. So uh, let me just give you a source here. Uh, there's this example here mm -hmm. uh, of, um, you can also always put it in Google Translator from Deutschlandfunk, talking about mm -hmm. how in Algeria uh, the Isla uh, an Islamic uh, party formed that tried to abolish democracy and then military had to intervene. Uh, mm -hmm. 
to uh, to save democracy. So, um, uh, so we also have to democrat uh, bring democracy to those people or teach it to them. How can war do this? Well, sure. So you pointed out before that higher economic development increases the likelihood that democracy succeeds, right? Uh, can you just go on? Sorry. Uh, can you just go on because I have uh, less time? I just want also to bring something. Sure. So you brought it before that higher economic development increases the likelihood that democracy will succeed and be stable. Part of quote unquote teaching people to be democratic is giving them economic development, giving them like education, reducing religious strife, reducing ethnic strife. All of these things are reduced in the context of democracy because there is less authoritarianism, there is more economic growth, there is more education. All of these things improve the ability of people to do democracy. All right. Okay. Uh, but I'm also doubting uh, whether it is possible to bring a democracy through war, because also uh, a war can't really solve social problems, for example, in the Middle East, uh, when there's this problem of Sunni again, oppressing Shias um, that, uh, uh, that uh, makes uh, democracies, uh, that makes a democracy impossible for minorities, uh, and war can't solve those social problems. Sure. So war alone can't solve those social problems. If you instead have a afterwards a long military occupation, as the U.S. had in Iraq and Afghanistan, we have been able to force these regimes, for example, to allow women into the Afghani and Iraqi parliaments. We have been able to force them to enormously improve their education rates. We have enormously increased their GDP growth rates. All of the things that you think are important to democracy are being improved more quickly under democratic regimes. That's why. Impose democracy, speed the growth of democracy. Now it's more stable than it was before. So why do we have to war in the Middle East if everything was so good? Well, so the question is, let's, let's, again, a hypothetical. Let's imagine that we don't do a war. Every country in the world would arrive at democracy in 100 years. But instead, we do do war. We kill 100,000 people now, but we arrive at democracy, full democracy worldwide, in 50 years. We save 50 years of suffering for the about a third of the world. Is this not a worthwhile goal? Do democracies uh, that, not kill that, like no, a lot less no, people? No, uh, you're you're saying that uh, that invading other countries will bring democracy. I'm I'm saying that's not uh, that's uh, that's not possible in 100% of the cases, because sure, it doesn't need to be 100%. That, that's why I brought no. Uh, it uh, it should be 100%, and uh, uh, I don't think it's, it's uh, it is even 50% because war doesn't solve social tensions and social problems. That's why we have so much uh, problems in the Middle East with uh, in the case of democracy because there are also, there are also tribal problems, social problems uh, that war can't solve. So why using war? Why not using economical? Uh, sure. Uh, so. Positions? One of the contexts, so we know that like imposition of war improves the economy of these, not the imposition of war, imposition of democracy via war improves local economies. GDP growth rate is about like one to 3% higher in these imposed democracies than it is beforehand. So if the goal is like you want to improve the economy of these local areas, we could simultaneously do whatever you want to talk about, economic aid, like sending over technology, whatever, and also impose democracy via war. These are not mutually exclusive. In fact, it's better to do so in the context of democracy, because then their growth is even higher than before. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't get how this comes to my point. Sure. So if democracy increases economic growth, and you think we need to improve economic growth to get people to do democracy on their own, we can increase economic growth in two ways. Let's do both of them. Uh, yeah. I really don't get how this uh, how this comes to our conversation or debate. Okay, again, please. So, if we impose democracy via war, mm -hmm. then that democracy has higher growth rates. If the goal of economic aid it was to increase the growth rate, if the goal of that increased growth rate is to improve the stability of democracy, then adding as many ways as we can to increase the growth rate should improve the stability of democracy. But when we are leading war, we are, we are also uh, uh, punishing the economical growth. Sure, in how, the short term. How, how can it, uh, not just in the short term, when you, for example, when you have like a full-blown war uh, against Iraq, and the uh, Iraqis are uh, defending themselves in all possible ways, for example, in the bombing of Dresden, then you would uh, like also destroy the factories and so it's not uh, it's not like just a short uh, a short 
it's not as short term as you say for example the rebuilding of germany also took uh, like until the 70s or 80s that's not a short term sure so germany is somewhat of a odd example because it's a total war in the context of world war ii most wars are not so bad as world war ii i posted another empiric in chat which shows that after a multilateral intervention into a country the gdp growth rate from the year of the intervention to 10 years later is about 3.84 percent higher than it was before the intervention so it seems like the argument that it will reduce economic growth is simply not the case Right. Especially for modern interventions. Maybe it was in 1945, but Germany and Japan seem like prominent examples of very successful democracies. So even with all the destruction, it worked. Japan is one of the richest countries in the world. So is Germany. Yeah, but not just uh, 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 because of, also of other factors, not because uh, just, democracy uh, helped. Just, because of, uh, just because of leading war against them. I mean... Do you think that Germany would have become a democracy without war? Uh, no, I wouldn't. Okay, no. then it wouldn't have been a democracy. Like, that's it. It would have been like a Nazi regime to this day. Uh, no, it, you, you're, 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 uh, what do you say? you're twisting the words in my mouth. Okay, so, would you like to clarify? Yeah, so I was saying that... Uh, that um, uh, when we impl implement social, uh, when we have so uh, as prominent social problems um, like uh, like in the Middle uh, East, that for example Sunnis are oppressing Shias, uh, an, a normal war won't uh, solve this problem. And um, then, uh, but uh, democracy has to be uh, has to be uh, done by the people. But if the people will not support democracy and if we bring it through war, and uh, as you said in the beginning, you wanted, uh, uh, you said we are just talking about war. Now you're talking also about an economical growth. So you're also. Uh, you're uh, out of time. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, thank you for that. Uh, so the point that I was trying to make there, so the, the debate, I think, cleaves into a few points. One, democracy obviously improves all these outcomes that we care about. That has not been seriously contested in this debate. So everyone in this debate should value more democracy. It means less death. It means more growth. It means more freedom. These things, maybe there's some people in this debate that want more death, less freedom, and less growth. So then the question is, how do we get there? So Honeyglow has suggested, hey, maybe there are ways other than war that get us to this conclusion. They have not presented any evidence that ways other than war are more effective or even effective at all in establishing democracy. I've presented numerous studies showing that imposition of democracy, while it is not a perfect method, certainly has a non-zero success rate. It seems to improve the growth rates of the countries that are involved. And those growth rates, in turn, seem to improve the stability of the democracy that forms afterwards. So... It seems like the imposition of democracy improves democracy in the short term because it's been imposed and also in the long term because it's improved the growth rate. So this is useful. The second question then is, well, what about these other methods? Let's say they actually are effective despite the lack of evidence in this debate to that effect. Okay, the question is whether these are exclusive with war. Can we only do war or the aid? If we can do both at the same time, then these are not mutually exclusive. In like debating terms, we would say that uh, the plan can absorb the counter plan, right? The, 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 there is no reason that we can't just do war and then do economic aid. So if that's their alternative, we can do both. Um, oh, that's the other term, perm do both. So the, that's kind of it. Like the other option has no evidence. Even if it did have evidence, it would not be mutually exclusive. Therefore, invade. Um, the fact that war is not perfectly successful is not an argument against it. I didn't raise it before, I wanted to, but like many medical treatments are not 100% successful. Like cancer, <laughs> cancer treatment has like a 60% rate of dying after five years. We still do it because we value even the short-term decrease of cancer and the slight chance that it might improve someone's life in the long time. So the, the idea is that often we do interventions that aren't perfect because we know that they will tend to improve, on average, the ability of people to live well. Democracy as an imposed intervention is exactly one of these. I hope you all can vote with me today and invade other countries to remove the cancer that is autocracy. <laughs> That's all.